Hello everyone, so I've been streaming me farming Wilderflight or Spire the Watcher, Percy's boss for the last couple days now and a lot of people have been asking Aegis why you're farming Wilderflight. Number one, I've been lazy until now and I've realized that because the new wild style grenade launcher was a bit of a disappointment despite the preview being a solar double fire GL from an endgame activity aka Grandmaster Nightfalls, I was pretty disappointed. So I decided, you know, I'm just going to farm for Wilderflight, which is the best option for double fire swap DPS, as well as an excellent blinding jail option. So let's cover why would you farm, right? Why farm at this time? Right now, um, you can get a blinding auto and lead from gold roll, which is really, really good. You can also get spike auto frenzy or spike auto vorpal. Wilderflight is the highest swap DPS lightweight GL or slash special GL in the game right now. So really, really good for damage rotations if you're looking into that into optimizing your Izzy damage and uh, rocket rotation damage more. And it's also excellent for GMs. I love using Disorienting Auto and Lead. Some people like using Disorienting Auto and Frenzy as well. Uh, double fires naturally, if you shoot them at the ground, they kind of split if you shoot them at certain surfaces. So they have higher blinding blast radius, uh, you know, in, in practice, higher blinding blast radius than a normal lightweight GL. And um, they also do more damage, so they're good for like chunking out champs as well. And auto lead from gold is obviously excellent if you're running in a team that's generating heavy a lot using stuff like Aeons and Senno. So that's why you farm. That's what you might be looking for. Let's talk about team comp. So in order to one phase Percy's, the final boss, the Wyvern boss in Spire the Watcher, um, my team uses three hunters. I'm pretty sure you could get this done with a Titan or a Warlock. The Titan would probably be on Pyrogale and the Warlock would probably be on Well. However, uh, this is not super necessary. You could also be on Needlestorm on a Warlock, but I think hunters are the best because they have access to Radiant Dance Machines. Now, that being said, because Envious Bait Cataphract is so good and doesn't require a bunch of reloads like rockets do, if you choose to use heavy GLs, I think it's more forgiving for team comps that include less hunters and more titans or warlocks. But <clears throat> the team comp that my team used, again, three hunters, and everybody was on Starter Scales and Blade Barrage. And so <clears throat> you start out by procking bait and dumping two rockets, you Blade Barrage, and then you switch exotics mid Blade Barrage to Radiant Dance Machines, and then you continuously dump rockets like that. And that's basically how you can consistently one phase the boss. There's a couple other things that you're gonna need, artifact mods specifically, but that is the basics. If you're on Titan, you would just do the same thing, but you would pyrogale the boss instead of blade barraging. And if you're on Warlock, you'd probably needle storm and use grapple reloads instead. So let's go ahead and quickly look at the artifact mods that I was using. So if I go ahead and open my inventory here, the artifact, this is what you're going to need. For the most part, I would say you could put on Torch if you have like a Strand Warlock in your team, but the main ones are Heart of the Flame, especially if you're on Hunter or Titan for that Solar Damage Super. Uh, you want Revitalizing Blast. Now notice I said we didn't have any, you know, Void Hunters. We didn't have a Tether. We didn't have a Div or anything like that. We specifically only use three Solar Hunters, and that's because Revitalizing Blast from this season allows you to debuff bosses. It's just a weaken, but you can use a knife or a fusion nade or a swarm nade or, or your blade barrage also weakens. So there's a bunch of different options. And you'll notice in the clip that I'm about to play for you, uh, the boss is yellow for most of the time. The yellow numbers are there. So it's weakened for most of the time. And it's better than using something like a star or tether for damage loss. So and the final mod you're going to need is also Argent Ordnance, right? Argent Ordnance, um, this just means that you need a lot of armor charges going into damage. Just make sure you have at least three going into damage and you should be good. And uh, it'll boost your rocket DPS by, you know, 15% rocket damage by, by 15% as long as you have armor charges, which is really good as well. So let me go ahead and go back to my list here. So that's the team comp. Let's go over and we talked about artifact mods as well. Um, let's talk about some brief optimizations you can do for this farm. So initially, if you want to speed up this farm as quickly as possible, right? The first thing you can do when you load in slash when you wipe, and I'll explain why I said wipe in just a second, you can do something called a temp perma. So I'm doing this with Izzy here. I'm going to go ahead and temp perma. And what this is doing is basically I place the flag or I shoot right as I'm about to place the flag. And this allows my teammates to rally while also starting the encounter as quickly as possible. So you see here, the flag will not stay there forever, but it'll persist for long enough that if my teammates are making some swaps, they can rally safely and then go and kill their angelics or whatever they need to kill on the sides. So here, if you have one Izzy on each side, angelics die pretty much instantly. And then you can get the minotaurs to spawn as quickly as possible, which of course allows you to get started with the nodes as quickly as possible as well. So here I'm on a void shotgun. I switch loadouts midair to a wither horde and a trace rifle. Now the trace rifle is obviously to shoot the nodes, so I'm, I'm helping my teammates shoot the nodes there. 
Um, we're doing a 1-2 split, so two of my teammates are on the right side. One of them is going to focus on nodes, the other one is going to focus on baiting the boss and bringing him into the top room. Now the reason for this is because if you have a team that's really really fast at doing nodes, which my team was pretty competent here, there is a chance that the wyvern will not be in the top room and you'll get that deactivate noise, you'll have to do the mechanics again. So having someone bait the boss through this middle door is really really important. You'll see already we have gotten that reactor core purge done, so it's time to get to damage. Now here, because you have so little time to make orbs and really set up for damage, you need four orbs for Feast of Light, right? So Feast of Light times four. I would really strongly recommend using mods like Heavy Handed, uh, as well as Siphon Mods and Reaper. That way you can stack a lot of orbs very quickly and be very efficient. You can get like one orb per kill instead of relying just on Siphon Mods. So you'll see here, I use Reaper, I use Heavy Handed. All these mods combined make a ton of orbs on the ground. My teammates are also making orbs. And then we close up the hatch and get ready to do damage. So damage wise, I didn't mention, I just mentioned kind of subclass exotics and stuff like that, general damage strategy. Uh, of course, if you're using rockets, you have one on galley, you have one person on galley, you have one person on Lumina, and the third person can be on whatever they want. In this case, I'm on Wither Horde, and then I swap to fourth horseman, as do one of my other teammates, the one that's on Lumina. If you are on heavy GLs, you can have everyone be on Lumina, because that way everyone's guaranteed a 35% buff for the entire phase, and obviously you don't need a galley or anything like that, so everyone can be on Lumina, and Cataphract isn't an exotic, so, you know, everyone can be on whatever they want. So, here as for damage, my teammates give Pack Hunter early. As soon as this explosion goes off, my teammates give me Blessing of the Sky as well as Pack Hunter, and someone throws a knife, just dedicate someone to throw a knife early so that your Blade Barrages are all debuffed. I proc bait, I shoot two rockets, I Blade Barrage, and I swap to Radiant Dance Machines in my inventory, I healing grenade the ground to wait for reconstruction, and then I go forward next to the boss because Radiant Dance Machines needs you to be next to the boss for the first dodge or next to an enemy for the first dodge. And then here on out, it's just kind of spamming rockets, dodging, spamming rockets, dodging. And you're going to see my team do something pretty interesting here. So we horseman the boss and we all rocket the ground as soon as the boss dies. So we trade with the boss, right? You've probably seen this in day ones where, you know, certain teams, they kind of clutch up and they trade with the boss, but we're doing this intentionally. And the reason for that is because, for whatever reason, when you kill the boss, Inspire the Watcher, if you kill him, Mission Complete doesn't happen for a short period after that, so it's still a darkness zone. And for that reason, the loot will drop from his body, right? You'll see the chest, we'll get some XP here, you'll see the loot just popped out of his body, but we wipe. And because we wiped before we got Mission Complete and the objective updated and the dungeon is over, when we wipe, we're still in that Percy's wipe zone, right? And so when we respawn, the loot is there, but Percy's is still here, and we can still start the encounter and do it again, farm him over and over and over. Now, this timing is a little bit sensitive. Even if you trade correctly, there's a chance that it doesn't work if you get a little bit unlucky. But as long as your final shot kills the boss and also kills you, you should be okay. So the way we did it in my team is I told my two teammates to kind of die a little bit early, and then I would kind of handle it just to make sure that I died with my final shot killing the boss. So that's kind of why I preferred rockets on this boss. Uh, rockets are very very high burst. It's a little bit more skill to use than GLs But in my experience when I was farming with a teammate uh, some teammates that were using heavy GLs It was kind of difficult to trade with the boss because heavy GLs do less damage per shot So you'd have to shoot the boss and then shoot the ground and then you you wouldn't trade a lot of the time uh, You would not get um, you know Percy's wouldn't respawn and you wouldn't be able to farm him effectively So the reason why this is such a good idea to do this strat and kind of make things you know a little bit harder for yourself when you're farming is because Spire the Watcher has an extremely, extremely, extremely long um, voice line when you load in. Very, very long load times. So think about it like this, right? If we were to just kill the boss normally, I would have to leave the fire team, change character, my teammates would have to join on me, I would load them in, they would have to sit through Osiris talking about pillory bunkers for 55 seconds, and then I would have to join them after they're loaded in. So 55 seconds, and then they'd have to wait for me to also wait through that 55 second voice line. So really, really effective to just do this farm and do this kind of wipe trade. Even if you end up two phasing, it's still faster to two phase than it is to sit through two Spire of the Watcher load time screens because they're very, very long. So we talked about trade strat. We already talked about the Temperum actually at the start of the video. And um, that's pretty much all I have to say. So hopefully this helped. Bit of an advanced farm strat. But if you notice from cycle to cycle, so me shooting the boss, I shoot the boss at two seconds here. And then if we notice on the next wipe, I shoot the boss at 135, 134. So this is a farm where you can get two drops, two chances at Wilderflight every 90 seconds, which is insane, right? Even spoils farms, like Templar spoils farms pre-nerf, with the load times included, were even longer than that for cycles. So if you have a team that's very efficient and takes this seriously, you can get a lot of good results out of this. So yeah, I hope that helped and um, enjoy farming.